Greetings everyone, it's Maggie here. I'm actually just about ready to do my pour and it's a sample pour for a piece of art in my own dining room. I've been busting to do it um, and the canvas I'll be doing it on is really, really, really big. I can't actually remember the size. Um, but I need to use my outside trestle table and the weather's starting to improve in Australia so I'll be getting on to doing that soon. So I thought I'd test out my colours and how I want it. So I'm using all global colours today. I will run through them because everyone does seem to like knowing what the colours are. From, oh I can't find what this last one here is. Oh, there it is over here. Okay, so this one right over this edge here is called Harbour Night. This one here is, oh, sorry about my arm there, Deep Sea. This one here is Palm Green. Then I used an Ultraviolet. Then this one here is an Antique Silver. And this colour that looks white is actually Birch Forest and it's a lovely cream colour and I was um, I'm using it because I'm hoping not to get that stark white and really allow the, paint, uh, the other paints to feature. When I was um, mixing everything up together which is just my normal pouring medium combination of PVA Floetrol um, and a dash of global medium and I add the dash of global medium because it helps it just sort of helps I don't know what it actually does um, but I just like using it. It could even be out of habit now. So I'm going to um, prepare my cups now and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing because I think I want to see how this palette is going to work in a variety of ways um, so that ultimately I can work out how I would like to use it on my big canvas. Uh, as you can see I didn't put white in this last one. I don't want it to be my last one. I'm going to use the um, antique silver for the last there. I think I want that to cut through a bit more. So from a height, remembering if you're pouring from a height it helps the paint, paint gain some momentum and then it has greater weight to push through the other colours and it starts creating cells immediately um, in your cup and is more effective um, in some ways, not in all ways. Oh look I've forgotten to put ultraviolet in this last cup because I was too busy thinking about how I was pouring my paints in. Um, I'm using these nice little 100 mil, oh that looks a bit thick doesn't it, 100 mil um, paper cups today because I'm thinking I might even try a bit of a ring pour with this palette just so I can see how it looks in it in the various ways that colors come out you know they you can do a flip cup a dirty pour a ring pour a puddle pour all using the same colors and get a different result each time we all we all know this oh I better keep all my paints together so um, I might do a flip cup here here I go and one here. I might do a bit of a ring pour here because I'll only be able to tilt this once. And we'll just see how we go. I hope you've all been good. I'm getting really, really sick of winter now. I'm so over it. Okay, so I've used way too much of the birch for my liking so I might actually add a few more colors and continue that ring pour it's just too too cream for me so that's what's so good about doing a, um, a bit of an experiment with your colors before you do a big canvas you can see how they're going to behave with each other and how they're going to look next to each other in certain styles. I wonder how this will look when I tilt it. And I'm going to stop now 
and I'm actually going to start the other one here because I don't think I mind that too much. Oh, I actually like it like that. Isn't that interesting? How I like this one. The other part was quite white. I know you saw it too. Alright, let's continue with this. I'm just wondering what I want to do. Do I want that to push out? Or do I want to go around it? Well, who knows? I've really done it now. We'll see what's going to happen. It's more like a dirty pour, isn't it? Be interesting when it tilts. Then I'll lift these flip cups, which have been very busy doing their own cells and business. Now we'll just let everything sort of settle down. And then what I might do is pour a bit of a combination of paint for around the edging and then tilt it and just see how we go. Nice, nice cups. I always love the inside of my cups, do you? I'm just crazy about you. Got Nick Cave on in the back. He's um, singing me a nice tune. I love Nick Cave. Been a big fan of his for a long time. Now, I'm not going to put any white into this one, just I feel like there's enough, well I should should call it by its correct name, come on. I'm not going to put any birch forest into this cup that I'm going to be pouring around the edges, just simply because I feel like there's enough white feature in there and I can always add a little bit more in. Okay, so my idea is just to, or maybe I should tilt before I add, no I'm not going to, I'm going to do this. I'm pretty sure I've got enough paint to stretch out, but I just have this feeling of wanting to do this. So, you know, who am I to interrupt what my feelings tell me to do? I've done that half my life, I've got me nowhere. And I can see now why I wanted to do this. It's adding a beautiful border. Now I don't even want to tilt, but I'm gonna to have to because I've I've got way too much canvas showing. Oh, I really, 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 really love the antique silver. Okay. So I'll give it a little bit of a torch before I tilt. It just helps stabilize the cells that are formed or, or in forming mode. And also to get rid of the first layer of air bubbles when I move all of this paint and make a huge big mess everywhere from it spilling down, some other air bubbles will come up too. Just um, the nature of the beast from doing a lot of stirring and I certainly, um, under other circumstances, would have waited my half an hour before um, pouring. I'm gonna actually take you off the tripod and give you a bit of a closer look at how this is before we tilt. There's some really good features, okay? So we've got some gorgeous cells here, but look where I did that border. And I feel really, really like, oh, I don't want to tip it, but it's going to come off and it's really, really, really nice. And there's the ring pour thingy, which I wouldn't really call it a ring pour because, oh, well, it is, isn't it, really? I probably should give myself a bit less of a hard time. I wouldn't give any my students or my friends this type of hard time. God, look at them, how nice. Um, okay, you can go back up on the iPod paddle thingy now. There you go. Can you see? I'm just going to make sure you can see. Oh, that light's in the way a bit. Oh, well. oh if I move it, you, you lose lighting. Never mind. Oh, that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my tilt now, and I'm going to get paint everywhere. And I haven't got gloves on. I better put some gloves on, haven't I? Just it'll make it so much easier for me. Luckily, I've got gloves in arms reach everywhere in the arty van. <sighs> all right, I'm 
ready. I'm going to, I'm wanting to try and keep these. So oh, I might even not tilt too far backwards, just the tiniest bit and fill it in if I can later. But can you see how I'm being ever so gentle with my tilt? I've seen a lot of people pick up their canvases and give it the biggest tilt, you know, like almost tilting it sideways and um, they lose so much and you do like we don't have a huge amount of control over everything in pouring but there are some things we do have control over and some of that's about what we keep on our canvas okay it's coming down now and the border didn't move so much which I was sort of hoping it, it wouldn't Oh, I'm going to lose a bit of that, but that's okay. I'm going to come this way. That's enough. I'm losing too many cells. Not paying enough attention. I'm going to try and push that last bit all the way to the edge now. Don't want to get lose that bit, so that's about it. All right, I'm just seeing what I've got down there. Okay. So I'm literally just gonna scoop some of this up. Like that. Well, it was pretty unsuccessful. And do this. Well, let's stop my paint from dripping any further. Do you run your finger across the bottom of the canvas to help your paint stop dripping? If by removing these drips, what you're doing is um, not allowing the weight of the paint to pull any more paint off your canvas. And it stops you from losing lots of your gorgeous creation. Well, it, might not stop it but it certainly prevents it well well I do like it um, I like how I've got a couple of different things going on which has broken the whole picture up it's going to need another torch so best I take off these messy gloves and do that now and um, then I'll take you off the pedestal and you can come in and have another look I might use the big ferocious torch this time because I'm not going to be working this to make any cells. I, I like working some of my works. When I say work it, like I get my torch and find specific lines where I want to really use my heat to encourage cells to come out. Um, and I can feel myself having that urge now so I'm going to have to take my gun away from myself it's not really a gun is it it's just my torch all right it's looking gorgeous come on down to have a look Huh? Can you? I don't know if you can tell, but the the forest birch or the colour, it's really, really, it's not as stark as the white, and I really feel that it's just working so well with this. Though I'm not sure you can really see the differences. It's dark outside, so maybe I'll need to um, post that separately. A picture of it um, dry and in the natural light. Um, 
I haven't got much to complain about with this whole experiment. What I have learned is that my color palette is working beautifully together, but um, by having done a few different methods on the one canvas, I find that the pictures got a lot of extra um, nice bits to look at without it being too busy with cells and I'm liking that. I'm liking how I've got areas that don't have the white in which seem to naturally frame the um, lighter areas. Um, so there's actually a chance that I'll end up doing a few techniques on the one big gigantic canvas. All right. Look at those gigantic cells, they're gigantic, like they really are, there's my thumb, like they're fully huge, okay? Alright, well I hope you're all having a lovely night, say hello to me, I'll say hello to you, send you all my pouring love and pouring magic, oh did I tell you I use 100% diethicone, this, oh dimethic, I can't even say it, 100% it is like four drops in each cup and each cup had about oh, 220 mils in it all right ciao